Again, David Rodecker. I am the Chief Technology Officer, for those who don't know the, the lingo inside the, uh, the tech world, uh, of, of Local Splash. And uh, uh, previously, I was at local.com. Uh, many years ago, we thought that this uh, and thought the internet would be a conduit for getting local information to people, and uh, it just so happens to have uh, transpired. We see these statistics that uh, you know people profoundly say in the year you know 2020 we're going to be doing this sort of business, etc. Uh, so to be honest, very skeptical. But the reality is that uh, consumers really are using local information. They're going to search engines, uh, looking at online review sites. Uh, social networks and uh, and so on. It's extremely prevalent here in the United States as well as growing worldwide. About in 2004 uh, was the really the starting point of a lot of this major move to local. Now before that we had super pages and yellow pages had online directories so there was the traditional things Yahoo had yellow pages as well uh, but this is where we started to see local search attributed from the search engines. Starting back in uh, just the very end of of 2003, the red line here, this is a, a, a Google, and the blue line is uh, major yellow page super pages. <clears throat> and this is a measure of popularity as dictated by how many people are going there. Alexa tracks and gets the information from ISPs to see how many people are actually going to this website and this website, et cetera. And it's pretty accurate to, uh, to estimate you know, popularity from that measure. So if you look at the trending, when Google started, well, they just had a Google Maps. And that became like a pretty good, you know, hey, people can now go to this place and search maps and find some information. And we start to see a slight decrease in the popularity of Yellow Pages. <clears throat> in time, however, <clears throat> they made the experience such that when you go to the Google uh, website, you don't have to go to Maps section. You don't have to click on the Other tab and Other Other to get to Maps, et cetera. You type in a, a query, and they give you the results right on the front page of Google. So if you said plumber in Irvine, you would see the plumbers in Irvine pop on up. So we have these accretion points where it pops up and pops up and pops up, and it correlates to uh, more prevalence of showing those search results. Previously, you had to say plumber in Irvine. Now you can just say plumber, and I'll show you a little bit of why that's, it, that exists. Uh, they also have done things to automatically identify where you're at, and they're very good at that. And then most recently, they have this thing called Instant. So last year, we were uh, told that uh, about 20% of searches were believed to be local intended in nature. Uh, and about one out of 13 times, they showed a map as a search result. So that was last year before many new technologies. I've heard estimates that it's, about, it's around 30% and over one in 10 times they show a map. So it's extremely prevalent. It's what users are looking for. So there's this thing called Google Instant. Uh, came out uh, just a month ago. So uh, it seems like it's you know, the de facto standard now because it's not a slow thing that they put it out. They put it out to everybody, whether or not you liked it or not, it's there. Uh, and what it means is as you start to type, they just give you a search result. So uh, in this example, actually, if you just type in G, the, the second recommendation is Google Maps. So it's like really huge. They know when you're typing G that that's where you want to go. But this is what you get. So if you just type in plumber, you're going to get local search results. And by the way, let me, I have to put an asterisk on this slide, actually. It's fresh off the slate. We just prepared it last week. It's here today. This search result page already looks different today. They had uh, one of the most uh, well-established per persons at Google uh, named Melissa Mayer. She's responsible for all the user interfaces since day one at Google. She is now only focused on local and local-based services. So her whole focus is changing the search result page to focus on local. So this page, uh, there is this view, but they also have a, a uh, uh, and I'll take a screenshot in a moment, but the, uh, the whole page is just dedicated to local. They're extremely aware of the fact that everyone wants this. So they've, they've done the, the, the reverse IP. They know who you are. If you've logged in before, you've done searches, they have a history of that. And your last search, if you last search for something in your work, they'll, they'll preserve that. But uh, more recently, they've done something where they've driven around. And you probably have seen the Google Street View, where they have you know, storefront photos. And you can just travel along the street. Very cool. So what they did, though, while they were doing that, they weren't just collecting pictures. They were also listening for what this thing is picking up right now, which is Wi-Fi signals. And they can identify all the Wi-Fi networks as they're driving up and down the streets. Thereby, when I connect with my laptop, if I'm using Chrome or Firefox, doesn't work in IE, 
They couldn't get a partnership with Microsoft there. <laughs> but uh, if you're using Chrome or Firefox, thank you, uh, they have an integration such that even if you're not on a wireless network, but your computer sees wireless networks, it lets Google know. And Google then takes all that information, says, well, if I see that one, that one, that one, does some mathematics, and they triangulate you. So literally, uh, and you can see this take effect if you click that blue button, and it will put you right there. It's extremely precise when it works. If it doesn't work, they'll let you know. They're not even going to try. So that information, um, by the way, if it doesn't work, you might notice a pop-up bar that says, are you sure you want to share this information? Uh, because they'll actually try to make it seem like they're doing some security. But the reality is they're using that information in their search results, but it gives you a very hyper-local experience. So they've got you nailed down very well here in the United States as well as um, in other places worldwide they're doing this. So going back to our example, uh, if I just type in you know, a keyword, they're automatically going to start type giving me the local search results. I didn't have to say my location even. And this is uh, a change, a game changer for, for a lot of people in local search. Previously, it would be focusing tremendously on your keyword, your location. It's a very good, effective SEO technique. It's hyper-local targeting, your keywords, et cetera, that you're going to be looking for, you know, location as well as your keyword. And it's less relevant now because of the fact that you just start typing your keyword and they're showing you local results. The user's not going to continue to have to type in even the location unless they want to go somewhere else with it. So uh, the point of this slide, by the way, is that if you were doing optimization specifically just for your location, you may not have that take effect actually in normal search results without the location. So essentially, if I was optimized for plumber in Irvine, you may not be actually optimized for just plumber and they're doing the local search. Uh, it's actually somewhat of an anti-spam technique that they're actually looking to find the people that are really organically plumbers in that area, not just people that are trying to to stuff the search results with plumbers in Irvine. People who are interested in seeing you know, outside their location, there is a feature on the side over here. It's kind of buried, but you can go right into there and uh, change your custom location. So let's say you're traveling, you want to go somewhere else. Um, you can go ahead and specify a different location. So it's not tied to just being limited to where you're at. By the way, the, there are a couple of advertising opportunities. There's these things called tags and uh, boost actually, but I'll just talk about tags. So you can put little, little uh, indicators on the map and uh, it'll pop up as, a, as an indication there as you know, a special deal. They have about five or six different things that you can promote, coupons um, and uh, different offers. So it doesn't increase your ranking, but it gives you that little you know, differentiation from a visual standpoint. So what can you do to influence your ranking? And that's really the, the uh, focus of our company. We focus on the organic optimization in local maps. Uh, so let me go over a few factors. Uh, first off, you can claim your listing in a number of places, including Google, and doing so uh, uh, in some cases may influence your ranking, but moreover gives you the control to factors that can influence your ranking. So just go in and saying, I claim my listing, in and of itself is not a substantial factor, but it gives you the power then to do things such as uh, probably the biggest single indication is that you need to have uh, uh, your information correct. If you've had your business incorporated under different names, you've had different addresses, different phone numbers, you kind of have a lack of history to your, to your, to your, to your business. Now, bear in mind that the, uh, the, uh, when we started local.com, we had to go out and buy a business database. There's about three major companies you can do this from. There's InfoUSA, Axiom, and, and Amakai Localese. And so these guys you know, profess that they've got the whole business information database in the United States. The problem is that when AT&T deregulated, there is no foundation for a primary database in the United States. That is the case in a few other countries. England doesn't have the problem with because British Telecom has the monopoly still in that case. But in the United States, there is no you know, one source of that information. So we have several different data sets, and there is no complete one. And the biggest problem, we have a big study on this, is that uh, when businesses are you know, new, they fail to get in that database sometimes for years, potentially, depending on how they've registered themselves and their, their uh, providers and such. And then when businesses are out of business or have been changing addresses, et cetera, that information doesn't translate into there either. So you've got these business databases that are not accurate. They're about two-thirds accurate from most of our measures. So 
as a search engine, how am I supposed to know who to display? Well, I'm looking for the indicators of you know, who's alive and kicking, uh, who's got information in across several places on the internet. And it's got to be consistent. In Google's patent for looking at local, they take you know, what they know about your business name, address, phone number because you submitted to them, but they're looking across the whole web for all that information as well. So if you've got a web page, make sure you've got that information on your contact page or somewhere of the sort. Uh, so the, the other, another factor is a lot of people have 800 phone numbers or tracking phone numbers. Uh, those should be local in nature. If you're uh, not having a local phone number, it could lose the essence of you being able to declare that you're in that location area. They're going to give a preference. They know that people and users prefer to deal with local businesses in local search. So having a localized phone number is a key differentiation. 